Hi guys, this is Dr. Aeronautics. I've returned for leg five after just barely being able to sight, ground, and successfully land on the runway. I remind everybody that this is a hardcore series. It ends when it ends. So I am very thankful to be continuing on the journey, and I am not going to make the mistake that I did last time, which was attempting to land at night. I have confirmed that our leg five journey will not take us there. So this is leg five. It's labeled as uh, number four destination to number five destination. We're f flying from the island of Vitu Levu to uh, the island of Tonga Tapu. Um, this is going to be um, a quite short distance. You'll read off from number four for this flight. Uh, only about 540 miles. Um, we'll be flying the journey at a very low altitude of 12,000 feet because it's so short. Uh, so it's not going to be long before we can sight land even at that low altitude. Um, pretty shallow ocean depths, uh, nothing insane. That happens next leg. Um, we'll also be flying a speed profile of 2, which is slightly more aggressive um, of the balance between... Um, highest speed and uh, greatest endurance and range. Um, I'm anticipating just about, I think, 2.1 hours is what I got on the nav log. Um, you'll see it when it comes up in just a minute for this time of flight, and we'll have plenty of gas left over, as you'll see on the fuel burning chart. Okay, and here is our nav log today, and the biggest uh, red herring or great elephant in the room if you want uh, on there is the course slash route is grayed out. You might have remembered that the very last thing that I said at the end of the leg four uh, video was that I have grayed out the, the course route so that I do not follow that. My mind is um, drawn and reminded to follow the compass heading. So when we take off, I'm going for zero, nine, or seven, not one one two, and I'm glad I had to actually lean in to see that because uh, that's going to physically force me to think about that, which is good. Um, other than that, uh, there's not many changes now. Despite the fact that we're flying pretty aggressively, we're only at twelve thousand feet, so our true airspeed is only going to be two hundred eighty-two miles per hour. Um, and we have a headwind, so that means our um, actual anticipated ground speed is about 272 miles per hour. Um, the distance that we're traveling is only 592 miles, and okay, it's 2.2 hours, but still a fairly short flight. Again, we are planning to land in the morning exactly as we did on the very successful leg three flight. So, um, the question you might be asking is, why change what works? And the answer is because I really didn't like how bright the uh, the cabin light is. It's so obnoxiously white. So I tried to avoid that. Um, but what I did was I, uh, I purchased a set of uh, red-lensed aviators. So now all I got to do is slip those things on, and everything out of my eyes is red. So sometimes you got to do things the old way, but that's certainly a brute force method that solves the issue. As you can see, we're anticipating four and a half hours of fuel remaining, which means if for some reason we still get lost, even after doing an LOP intercept, we have four and a half hours to search. So that's good, but I, I don't want to uh, make a habit of having to search for my destination because when we go on the longer legs, it's going to matter. Now, one more thing that I will note about this navlog is if you look at TOC, the longitude is 177 degrees east, and TOC 1, 178 degrees west. We are crossing from the eastern hemisphere to the western hemisphere across the anti-meridian. And I anticipate, per the flight plan, that uh, my talk plus 30 minute fix will occur using my assumed longitude 
of the anti-meridian itself. So that should be pretty exciting. And then halfway through the flight, we're going to mouse wheel down from plus 179 something to minus 179 something. So that should be fun as well. Okay, here is the celestial checkpoints. Here are the celestial checkpoints that we'll be going through. Um, you'll note that I had finally updated um, the columns to the right. Uh, in the last video, they were really messed up, and I found they were messed up for a while. So I updated the um, the leg distance to what the actual distance is, and you'll notice the actual ground speed is three hundred, or sorry, two hundred seventy-two, all the way down the list, which is what I expect if there's no offset from my planned locations. So now it should now it should work properly, and I've also updated the line of sight. It shrunk from 182 nautical miles down to 80 nautical miles because of how we're not flying at 30,000, we're flying at uh, 12,000. And the other note there is that uh, if you look the talk plus 30 minute checkpoint, I've just marked on there, hey, I'm expecting anti-meridian around that time. East meets west, and then we cross over. Uh, I'm also single engine to Tonga the entire way, and we can return on uh, one engine the entire way because we have so much leftover fuel. And that's a good segue because we're going to our fuel chart next. Okay, here is the fuel burn chart. As you can see, if you look on the right side of the chart, uh, the ahead line does not intersect the one engine return line. So we have no uh, go no go points for a for a point of safe return, a point of no return, um, a one engine out point, or a, a one engine return point. So um, there's not much to say about it other than we're not using that much fuel, and I'm curious to know exactly how much I am going to burn um, using this altitude that I've never used before, uh, twelve thousand feet in this aircraft. Um, supposedly, it's one of the most uh, efficient flat wind speeds to fly. So, in other words, to say if there's if there is zero wind at altitude, um, then theoretically, ten thousand feet is the most fuel efficient altitude to fly at by like a difference of maybe a hundred nautical miles. It's 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 hardly anything. Uh, and just a note here, I said nautical miles, but the distances that we're doing are all in uh, statue miles with the exception of the uh, celestial checkpoints because those are done in nautical miles for the purpose of one nautical mile is defined as one degree of arc, which helps for celestial navigation. That's the whole reason a nautical mile exists. Okay, here is our landfall chart. And here's the other major action that came out uh, in the very last few seconds of the Leg 4 video. I said that I was going to add an observation column so that I never have to um, interpolate and guesstimate because that significantly affects your uh, LOP intercept. I've added my observed column here so that we can actually plot our altitude against the anticipated altitude. We're using Antares, which is the same star for leg three. And the reason we're using Antares is not only is it well positioned, but also for um, repeating what worked. You know, leg three was a sweeping success. And I want to taste that success again after the last leg. Leg four was really bad. So I want to, uh, I want to recreate that. So if you'll note that the ETA at base is uh, 1659, which makes sense. We're pretty, we're still pretty good into summer. It's late summer now, and we're south of the equator, um, mid mid February. So um, the sun will come up before 6 a.m. is when we'd be expecting the the sun to come up, and uh, because it's summer that's going to bring it earlier. So naturally the sun's going to come up about 5 a.m. And 1659 is 5 p.m. But guess what? We're crossing the anti-meridian today, which means we can assume an exact 12-hour flip. So when it says 1659, we can view that as being 4.59 a.m. 
which is really close to the time that the sun rises during the summer at our latitude, which is just about 20 degrees south. So we're going to get really close to where um, the solar sun goes straight at a 90 degree angle, which is pretty exciting. I said solar sun. What I meant was solar angle, solar elevation angle. There we go. Okay, one thing that I want to mention um, before we get started is you couldn't tell because it was dark out, but there is a serious jungle here in uh, in Fiji that I could not see because it was dark. It is thick, thick tropical rainforest here. Uh, it's a little bit too bad that we weren't able to see that because it is pretty cool to see. Um, I did want to have just a couple minutes of daylight at, at Fiji because it's not fair to the other to the other islands that you know either daylight or um, at some point you'd see daylight and if I switched from a night arrival to night departure we wouldn't be able to see Fiji at all so here is Fiji so that you can see it with your own eyes and with that we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, guys, here we are at the plane. Um, it looks like it's going to be another moonless night for Skyview Cafe. And uh, that's why it's darn hard to see the plane compared with last time. And same thing with the ground. I mean, the jungle, you can't see any of that at night. Um, well, you can kind of see a little bit, just barely. Um, it is very, very hard to see. But anyway, uh, we've got a takeoff time that we need to meet, so we're going to get started. Because this is a shorter flight and because I want uh, to see everything so that I need, I can review it if something goes wrong, um, I'm going to power through this. And if you guys don't want to watch it, feel free to fast forward. Uh, it takes me roughly 25 minutes to get everything set up here. Okay. Um, so outside, we have to do the visual check. Um, P tote cover removed. There it is. That's off. Tires inflated. Yeah. Yep. What a difference the moon makes. I can't even do this checklist. There's no way to get light. Can't check the tires. Can't check the oleo struts. Um, nose wheel, I can't even check that. Cowling fasteners, can't check them. Obstructions. We can clear the chocks out. All right, chocks are out. And just to confirm, 1427. Um, yes, that's right. Left off time is at 1458. Okay. Um, baggage compartment, we can't check that. Fuel tank's full. And again, we use that little cheat screen just to verify a couple things, and then it goes away once... Uh, once we drain the tanks out to where they should be, because the the gas tank here or the gas pump here will fill the tanks up, um, which is not what we want. We we want 636 gallons, which is what I'm what I left with on the first leg. Okay, that's it. So we're in the seat secured. Okay, headset connected, canopy closed and locked. Fiddle time. Got it. Okay. That is closed and locked. Flight controls. Check. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is it even worth doing this? Okay. I can't actually see it. Thank goodness. Three, four. Yep. And I need the rudders. Five, six, perfect. Okay. So that's working. Trim tabs, zero, zero, and one, two, three degrees back for pitch trim. Fuel selectors, we're going to go to reserve. And we're on drop tank. So that means we, let's see, I think it's going to be a one time. I can actually kind of see them right now. Do one click to go from drop tank to reserve. One, one. Okay. We're in reserve. Uh, fuel boost pumps. 
off, bomb selectors on, switches are in safe. Um, arming switches, that is. Throttled. Cracked. Okay. Um, prop governors, full forward, propeller switches in automatic. Why the heck can I turn my battery on yet? Uh, there they are. One, two, in automatic. All right, propellers, circuit breakers. Actually, I first check the mixture control and idle cutoff. Now I can check the circuit breakers. I can't see them. So this would have to be a time where, you know, you would just go over and feel them. We'll have to check them when they're on. Uh, prop feathering switches are in normal. Um, let's see that the covers are closed. I can't check anything beyond that for the time being. Clock, we're expecting right around 14.30. A uh, 14.30 just changed to 31. Altimeter. Um, oh, that reminds me. We need, to get, we need to get weather connected in. I don't think the weather's connected. Okay, and uh, we're loaded up. Uh, I forgot to mention for the weather briefing, um, there may be a couple thunderstorms around Fiji, but once we get out of Fiji, um, off of Vitu Levu, um, it is smooth sailing. Um, there are no serious clouds. There's going to be no clouds above us. It's going to be pretty much a completely clear sky. Um, so I'm going to set the um, altimeter here to field elevation. There we go. Okay, and that confirms we are connected. Uh, normally, I like to set it by hand, but I just want to verify that um, we have the correct pressure set. Uh, that verifies that I'm getting real-time weather updates. Okay. Uh, altimeter is set. Gun switch off. It's off. Uh, wing flaps are up and closed. Good, good. Aileron boost. I uh, cannot see it. Yeah, I can. There we go. It's on. Auxiliary hand pump. We'll test that. That's not the hand pump. Where the heck is it? There it is. It's working. Okay. Um, And the park and brake is on. Okay. We have some night flying checks to do, but first battery switch on. Okay, cabin light, there we go. Uh, landing light, you want to test that. It's going to be this guy. Test one, two, three, I see four, five. Okay, just in time. And then uh, recognition lights, you position the camera. There are maximum times that you're allowed to keep them on when, when you're not moving uh, because they overheat easily. So... Where are you guys? Here we go. Okay, one, two, three. I see it. Four, five, six. Perfect. That that limits ten seconds. Cockpit lights have been tested. Uh, avionics light. We're gonna test that now, and that's working. And turn that off for the time being because I I don't want to drain the battery even more than I did. Okay, left magneto goes to both. Uh, left generator to on. Okay, fuel booster pump on. Okay, prime, pull the primer if cold. Okay, either my eyes are getting better or it's slightly brighter than last time because I could see it. Um, starter energize. And engage. Okay, left engine is running, so we're going to bring that up to auto-rich. 
and throttle to 1000 RPMs so that we don't have issues with the uh, spark plugs. Oil pressure should be registering by this time, and it is, so we're good. Uh, fuel boost pump off. Okay, uh, hydraulic pump checks really don't work, so I'm going to do it once to verify that we have operation, and that's it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, that's right on time. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 seconds. That's right on time. Back to closed. Okay. Uh, right magneto to both. Right fuel booster pump on. Prime the engine. Okay. Uh, starter... Let's see if we can actually see the prop on this one, because that's where the action's really happening. Starter energize, starter engage. Nice. Okay, mixture control in auto rich. Set throttle to 1000 RPM. Oil pressure is registering. Fuel booster pump off. We should have gotten the right generator to turn on. I missed the right generator. I, I do that every single time. I don't know how I do that. Okay, we are all set up. I'm not going to repeat the uh, hydraulic checks, but we can do the uh, feather checks. Okay. Uh, radios, we're not using them. We're not supposed to have them anyway. If the darn thing didn't break down. Generator switch on for AC, and now we can get all the lights on. Uh, cooler shutters. Let's see, we want those in automatic, so that's going to be the middle position. Uh... Oil shutters are in automatic. That's the up position. Let's see. We want to check the gun sight light, so we will go ahead and... Oh, wait. Now it's on here, I think. Um, wing, cabin, tail, landing. No, uh, maybe it's on, on the uh, yoke. There's a bunch of switches up here. If we can't see this thing in a couple of minutes, we're gonna we're gonna have to move on. I gotta keep moving with this. It kind of really does annoy me that there's not like a light or something behind me. Oh, I think I got it. It's on the it's on the control column here somewhere. Alright, forget it. Uh, not worth my time at this point. We shouldn't even have to use it anyway. Uh, fuel warning light test. It's not going to do anything for us right now. Okay. And uh, fuel gauges are full. We'll have to check those again. Uh, gyro instruments are uncaged. Oil pressure should be 75 actually I have to check the oil oil temperature first for 40 C 
and we're above that oil pressure, check 75 PSI. As long as I can get it into the green, we're good. So if I bring it up to 1600 RPM, we have the pressure that we need. Hydraulic pressure is 11 to 1400, so we're good. And now the intercooler shutters we're going to place in the full open position. And that one I don't have to check because it tells what it's supposed to. Okay, lights as desired. Landing light on, we've got airflow now. Tail lights, wing lights, and cabin lights. We are lit up like Broadway right now. Uh, at this point, we're good to go to the taxi checklist, and I'm going to be very careful here to not press the reload simulation button when I request a pushback, at least the park brake. Okay, so checking the wind, um, we want runway niner. So I'm going to pull up the plate for uh, Nadia International. And we're actually not too far away from the runway, to be honest. Okay, that'll do for the pushback. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna turn that brightness down just a little bit. Let's see, set one, two, three, four, five, six. Up is the position that I usually like for takeoff. And that's it for now, so we're going to bring the lighting back here, and I'm going to do a quick rate check. Okay, that's working, and I also want to check the other brakes, because <sighs> that's not working. That is so annoying. Let me try pressing the period button. Unbelievable. So my my silly brakes here override the override everything but the parking brake, which is really frustrating because these things don't work proper. You know, like when I release them, even if I try to release them at exactly the same time, they always come off at different times. Check this out. So I'm gonna push them down at exactly the same rate and we yaw to the right, and now I'm gonna release them at the same time. Well, for some reason, that worked. If I can repeat that on takeoff, that would be fantastic. Okay, uh, brakes are working. Instruments, uh, check. So let's see. We got a good turn coordinator. We got a, got a he good heading indicator. We got a good, and I see the hold short line. Uh, let's see, nobody's there. Okay. Um, good compass, good standby compass, set the heading indicator, and we can also, um, we can also set, um, oh, I can actually see the windsock. Windsock says, use any runway you like. Holy cow! Do I see the pre-dawn light? I think I do. Wow. Well, you know, the, the flight's supposed to not be that long, so that kind of doesn't surprise me. That's actually going to make it rather nice to, uh, to fly. But I will double-check my flight time to make sure... Oh! Fuel, fuel, fuel. Oh my gosh. I nearly forgot that again. So we're going to go to aircraft fuel and payload and we want uh, to set up the setting that we we knew we had so left aux the auxiliaries are the um, are the uh, reserve tanks uh, the tip tanks we don't have 
So we'll set those to zero. And we're carrying a 165 gallon tank. So yes, 635.64, that's what we want. We've got 63%, we're stopped, so we know the fuel thing isn't filling us up. Okay, we're good. Okay, so we'll check the time one more time. Um, we're expecting a takeoff at 14.58 and it's uh, 14.44, so nothing wrong. Uh, canopy is locked, side windows closed with ratchets on. Right, still going down the runway straight here. Okay, just shut the, the uh, window. And just shut that one too. Okay. Check the rudder trim. Is at zero? Yeah, I think we're good. I can actually start to see stuff now, so I think... Uh, I think we're in astronomical twilight here. If I go to Skyview Cafe, let's see what time it is now. It's uh, 14 uh, 45, and check the insulation. Uh, no, it's it's still full night. Huh. Maybe we're getting some weird airglow phenomena. I don't know for sure. Okay, let's uh, go back to the checklist now. Uh, elevator trim three degrees back. Am I even going to be able to? No, I'm not. No way to no way to check that. Okay, fuel selectors on reserve. Can I see these things? Yep, I can. Yeah, they're set to reserve, so we're good. And fuel boost pumps. turn those on once once we get turned around. I, I think I think we're good for the time being. Okay, something tells me that we're not heading down runway nine or so there's two and twenty, oh yes. Uh, I'm not sure how we made the wrong turn, but we did. We're on the wrong runway. Good thing air traffic control exists in real life because, oh my gosh, so many people would get themselves killed if it didn't. Now, if this were a long leg, I would become very concerned and want to refuel. But seeing as how we have four and a half hours of extra fuel, not a concern. The other thing that I can do now is set up for um, my first sight. So let's see, um, talk, or the first leg is gonna be 97 degrees. And I am reading that from compass heading, so that's the, that's the right one. We're gonna set this to nine or seven. Right about there. And uh, top one is going to be at um, seventeen fifty six. So I want seventeen. 56 south, and it's going to be at 177 degrees, 55 minutes. Okay, 
estimated time is going to be... Let's see how we're doing on time. Uh, it's got 11 minutes. We should be okay. Just keep moving at a good speed, though. 17, 177.55, and the time is what I need. It's going to be 11 minutes after departure, so that's going to be 15... Zero niner. Okay, here here's the runway we want. Nine or two seven. The other thing we can do is set up the site here, so we can set our latitude to minus 1745, uh, and very, very mouse wheel, almost as much mouse wheel as you can give it, 177. Uh, 55. I read the wrong line. 1756. All right. 17. No. 7. Oh my gosh. 17 South 40. I keep reading the wrong line in the nav log. 17 South 55 minutes and 177 55 minutes east. Jeez, that was the hardest thing ever. Yeah, and the reason I kept looking up is because you do not want to run off the runway here. You know, you're going to go into the ocean. My purpose is to cross the ocean, not to go in it. Oh, what a nice beach. I'm sure that looks beautiful when the sun's up. I can't wait to see Tonga. I hear so many great things about how beautiful Tonga is. Hopefully uh, the flight simulator does it justice. Okay, we are lined up, so we're going to put the fuel boost uh, switches on, one on, two on. Uh, bomb selectors, we'll check that they are on and switches and safe so we can drop the drop tanks in a hurry if we need to after takeoff. For some reason, we lose the engines. Um, arming switches are in safe. Prop governors are full forward. Uh, propeller control is in auto rich. Heading indicator set. Press D because that's currently the only way that I can do it in the simulator. Cheating as it is. Uh, vacuum check two inches because it never says four, but it's fine. Yep. Generator switches both on. On, on, close, close. Coolant shutters. Let's see here. We can see these things. Does not look like they are open. Okay, they're open. The intercooler should be open as well. Yep, that's open. So the only one that seems to be closed right now is the oil shutters. So we'll get those guys open as well.
I don't think the automatic operation actually works um, like it's supposed to in the simulation. There we go, they're open now. Because it doesn't seem to moderate the temperature. Okay, uh, oil shutters, intercoolers are full open, dive flaps are dive flaps. Um, The switch for this is on the control column, so I cannot see it from where I am. They're up. Uh, wing flaps are up, and switch is in the closed position. Aileron boost is on. Uh, landing lights as desired. Well, they should be on. They are on. And other lights as desired. Did we turn the recognition light back on? I don't think we did. Yes. Let's turn that on. Recognition lights. One, two. Okay. And I am seeing that. So now we're going to do our run-up check. Uh, let's see how we're doing time-wise. 55, and we're expecting departure. 58. All right, we got to be really quick on this. All right. Feet on the brakes, left engine to 2300 RPM. Okay, and magneto. Nope, that's off. Check. Uh, it's one of the left or rights. Um, it's the other one. Back to both. Um, okay, and then prop governor. Pull forward, 200 RPM reduction to 2100. We come back, goes to pull again. Uh, tachometer, 2300 RPM. We're under 50 amps for the draw. And throttle back to 1200, except we're doing left and right at the same time, 2300 RPM. Check the magnetos, we're in both. Go to something that's in between. Okay, and something else. Good, and back to both. All right, we're good. 200 RPM reduction. This time, right engine comes back. Go forward, forward again. Put the left engine. Yes, I know. Tachometer, 2300 RPM. Once again, under 50 amps, and voltmeter's good. I didn't check that left engine, but that's fine because left engine isn't the same RPM that it was before and throttle back to 1200 RPM. And let's see how much time we got to go. Uh, just about 45 seconds now. All right, so I'm gonna set up here. Are we all ready to go? I think we are. Um, we didn't choose a star yet. We're gonna have to do that after takeoff because I do not have the time. Confirming, takeoff is set for 1458. We're on the correct runway. We've got just about 20 seconds to go. And this is definitely, I'm not going to take away any more time because we pretty much got it this time. As far as timing goes. Okay, feet are on the brakes. Three, two, one. I almost said ignition, go. Whoa, too much, too much, too much. Give me one 40 inches here. Yeah, if anything, we want, might want to add a little bit more time here. Okay, and we are going wheels up. Positive right, gear up. Okay, gear is up and locked. We're at the safe engine speed. We're going to pull the power back and check our operation here. See, everything looks within spec. Okay, we're good. Okay, throttle back up again. 
2500 RPM. We're going to turn on course now. It's uh, really windy right now, more so than I was planning. Uh, let's see, what were we expecting? Eight knots. This doesn't feel like eight knots. Okay, climb speed, we want to establish that 165, so we'll pitch up a little bit more here to slow down. Turn the fuel boost pumps off. And we can turn the landing lights off. It's daggone wind. Alright, I'm going to put my red glasses on now so I can actually see what's going on outside the plane. This stuff quits at 12,000 feet. We are going to have to turn the boost pumps off because the, the engine will shut down every time we hit 12,000 feet, which would be hilarious, you know, with the constant volley of turn off, turn back on. Looks like we're about 4,500 right now. Uh, did we finally hit smooth air? have to turn the oxygen on though. We can we can do this flight without oxygen. Alright let's let's pick let's pick a couple stars to shoot now. So we're heading eastward and let's see is going to be truing about 112. That's how strong our magnetic is. It's 13 degrees to the east right here. So I want something with an azimuth of approximately 112. Well, Antares is pretty much perfectly positioned, so uh, we're going to pick Antares as our speed star. And as our course star. There's a star I recognize in the southern hemisphere. Acrux. Or Acrux.
Maybe we should trade off between Acrox and Gacrox just for the heck of it. It's probably too much risk that we can assume there. Alright, and then I'm going to plug in the information for Antares. And I have to be quick because we got a short climb. So it's going to be 110 degrees. Ten degrees, and our elevation is going to be uh, thirty-five, thirty-five, thirty-five. What is it? Ten thousand? Nine thousand? Good, so we're set up for our shot. I can't wait to get out over the open ocean. I hate this weather. I eat it. Coming up to 12,000, so at this point we'll put the booster pumps on now so as to avoid another engine failure. Okay, and bringing up the cruise profile information. see stars. That's nice. Let's see. We are 2 and 12,000 feet. So we want... Yeah, this low, there's going to be quite a reduction. Um, let's see here. I want to go down to 36 inches manifold. Color 2350. And stop climbing. Okay, set the power, set the um, RPM, set the trim, instruments. Check them. They look good. Okay. Fuel quantity. Oh, we're, we need to switch tanks now. Um, let's see. It's uh, 1509. Reserve to drop tanks. One, two. Okay. We're on drop tanks. Uh, and then the shutters, we'll worry about those in a couple minutes here, because I can't s can I see. Let's see, I think, I think that is full closed. We'll, we'll worry about that later. I gotta update our position now. 
climbed to 13,000, so we we'll have to fix that. All right, uh, 1755, we're going to set our sighting for Antares at 1510. I'm happy with that. We have no offset, so I think we hit top exactly where we're expecting top to happen. Distance offset of zero. Mark it. There we go. And now I got to get my information here. We did Antares. Uh, Azimuth is. Um, well, we're drifting a little bit here. Let's fix the heading there. 110 degrees. And then the altitude is 35 degrees, 35 minutes. Actual time of the shot was at. Uh, 1510. Uh, offset was zero. So everything is good. And then I said we want to do act groups. Um, so let's do that. Um, a crooks is going to be at uh, azimuth of 181 degrees. It's going to be off this wing. And the elevation is going to be 44, uh, 45. Okay, clear the offset. I have it down. And here's a cruise. Okay, and that doesn't surprise me at all. We're pretty much bang on. We just took off. Yeah, that's that's right on. So copy this other information down. The star name is A Crooks. For star two, azimuth is 181. Altitude 44 degrees 45 minutes. Uh, actual time. I don't think I wrote that down. Probably 1512. If it doesn't finish in five seconds. Okay, 15, 13, 12 or 13. No, it's still gonna be 12 until it doesn't finish after the 13 mark. This is gonna be 12 by two seconds. 15, 12, offset of zero nautical miles. So we're right exactly where we expect us to be. So I'm gonna mark star two, and there we are. We are climbing. It's not good. All right, time to update this information. So from, from this position, I'm going to draw out the azimuth, which was 110, 
10 uh, minus 90, so that's going to be 20 degrees. Extend that out. And this line of position is called Talk Speed LOP. And then we're going to do it again. This time it's going to be 181 minus, or, yeah, minus 90. So we're going to do 91. I'm going to save that as talk force LFB. Um, so A Crooks is kind of not as much. I wanted something closer to 210. A Crooks is not such a good um, course star, so I think I'm going to go with an, a second star uh, next time. Okay, going down the uh, big list of things to do. Oh, I hate this annoying uh, camera manipulation stuff. We're going to scan the instruments, and that's really something that goes without saying, but I need to make a conscious effort of it until I actually do it. Um, yeah, we're still up near 15,000 feet. We want to be a lot lower. We're going to try to force the plane into a dive here. So heading is just barely all right. I'm trying to fix it. Oh, let's see. That city down on the right, that's going to be it's either Suva or Suva, the uh, capital of Fiji. And on the southeastern coast of V2 Levu. And then we'll be out over uh, open ocean with just a few small, I guess it's atolls, um, for the next 212 miles to Tok 1, and then from Tok 1 to uh, LOPI, it's, it's pretty empty. <sighs> it's gotten bumpy again. Ooh, that's interesting. Isn't it that flashing light might be another airport? I don't think I saw it, although on, on an island the size of Fiji, it would not surprise me to have a second airport down there. Now, sorry. That's got a runway of about 5,500 feet. So yeah, I could I could believe that that's the airport that could be responsible for that kind of thing. Um, that's a pretty good landmark. I'm actually going to write that down. And for goodness sake. Please stop pushing me around, stupid wind. And somehow we got pushed up to 15,000 again. Alright, well then we're going to have to take the power back. And we'll get the time down here. It's uh, is that 15, 1519. And that should give me a crude estimate for uh, speed. So it took us nine minutes to go 37 miles. 
So grabbing the E6B, I'm going to turn 9 on the inner scale against 36 on the outer scale. And then at the 60 rate, I'm going to read our true airspeed, which is 249 miles per hour. And compare that with uh, what I'm expecting per the nav log. I'm expecting a true of about 276, so it's a crude estimate, but it may hint at the fact that we are, or at the potential that we may be going slower than we're expecting. Okay, back to our checklist. Um, airspeed indicator. We're in a dive, so that doesn't count right now. Uh, we just d talked about the islands. Um, let's see, chart I just updated when we talked about uh, the airport that we saw. Let's see, fuel consumption rate. I'm going with uh, 93 gallons per hour. And we've not even been up for half an hour, so we've pro probably burned about 40 gallons. I'm not going to get any closer than probably because I'm, th I'm not that concerned about it. Um, okay, looks like we're back at 12.5, so I'm going to put the power back in. Okay, and we're climbing again, so still more pitch down. Um, I don't know why I can't check the weather now because I'm, I'm airborne, but when I checked the satellite, I didn't see any clustering of clouds way up here off the coast. Um, the weather was supposed to be a lot better now. And this is quite concerning because, you know, I can't do my talk um, site. Ah, stupid, stupid wind. It's forced me to keep an eye on my attitude indicator. Okay, this looks a little bit better. I mean, normally what happens when it's windy is you know you average out to one to one direction or or sorry you average to the center of where you're heading and you you go back and forth for some reason this aircraft at this time seems very biased in the right direction and this is really annoying all right um, and when I say the right direction I mean the uh, the southerly direction instead of the northerly direction, and it's incorrect. If we were in the right direction, I wouldn't be complaining about this. Okay, um, let's see, non-reserve fuel, 630 minus uh, 50 minus 40, so 540 gallons without reserve. Goodness gracious! I'm starting to get a little bit irritated here.
All right, now there's no cloud in front of us for a while, so we should be good. Um, all right, distance flown. Let's see, by now it'd be about 55 miles. So the distance remaining is gonna be about 540 miles. It is definitely possible to return to base. And that's it. Now we can start setting up for the next celestial checkpoint. So it's going to be um, at... I should say that our top checkpoint was one minute late. So we want to do um, our next site at 39... Okay, so we got about 15 minutes. I'm getting better at this because less time is passing. Um, fix our heading there. So I think Antares, yeah, Antares is just fine. So let's stick to Antares as star one. Um, but then we got to find a better star two. I love A groups, but it's just not properly positioned right now. Do I seriously have that amount of control authority? So I got really irritated about my uh, current heading, so I just really kicked the, the rudder. I guess I do have to be mindful that I'm in a fighter. Yeah, I, uh, wow. I can't believe it. Yeah, just, just testing it out that second time to make sure that that wasn't just a weird wind. I do apparently have that amount of authority, so... I guess uh, when I'm coming in for a landing, I just really need to kick it, and... Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll solve all the problems. I think we looked at Mia Placidus on uh, leg three, and I like the idea of just keeping to the same stars because that works. So let's go with Mia Placidus. the open water. What I was checking is supposed to be a lot more clear out here. Okay, we're traveling at um, let's assume we're doing 282. So I need to go out 141 miles. Wait a minute. You know, 29 minutes. So if I assume that we're going 200 and... Let's see, what's the assumed ground speed here? 141 is what we're assuming. Uh, for, wait, 141? No, no, no. Speed assumed is 282. And then I need to work out on the E6B. Where that is. So for 29 minutes, that's going to be 137 miles. So drag out 137 miles from the top point, and that is where um, our assumed position is. Okay, so our assumed latitude is. 18 degrees 40 minutes south and our assumed longitude is 
179 degrees, 53 minutes. That's seven nautical miles from the anti-meridian. And it is the Eastern Hemisphere, so mouse wheel party next time. Um, okay, so I'm going to start setting this up. 1840 south, and I think I saw a weather update. Hopefully this fixes things. And then 170, 7, 8, 9, 53. Can I even roll over to 180? Yeah, I can. Okay. I was going to say, I, I might be at the highest that I possibly can for this. Okay, 1840, 179.55. Okay. So now the star position, well, I have to update the, my position in Skyview, Captain. 1820, 179.55. And time of observation is going to be at 13. No, 15.39. That's going to put Antares at an azimuth of... ...110 degrees, and an elevation of 44 degrees, 15 minutes. Oh man, these low level clouds are getting really annoying. They're not supposed to be out here. Oh, they're below us. Okay, well, the, all right. Those were forecasted. What, what's higher up in the 20s wasn't. I guess that's just Cirrus. That's looking a lot better now. My heading, not so much. It's moments like this when not having autopilot really shows. So we want 110 degrees. And... 44 degrees 15 minutes? That does not make sense. Antares is rising. And last time we checked them. Oh, shoot. No, wait. No, it was set up. It was set up for eight groups. We're good. 44 degrees 15 minutes. I was going to say, we cannot possibly be lower in elevation. That's just a sanity check. It was a different star I was looking at earlier. We're good. We're good. What is that weird green column? What is that thing? Is that the aurora? Although we're too far south of the equator to... Uh, or rather, not far enough south of the equator to see it. There is something very strange going on here. Off to the left there. I don't see it anywhere else. You know, maybe I want to save before we go through the anti-meridian. You know, latitude is going to, or longitude is going to get really close to flipping, and I don't want any weird Y2K behavior going on with the simulation. So, um, I need to make sure this is set up 18... 40... 18.40... 1840. I plugged in the wrong number here. Oh, that's a that would have been a disaster. I'm gonna have to append this. So it's not 110. It's 109 degrees. And it's not 4415. It's 4420.
make those kinds of mistakes and I'm going to find myself right back where I was on the fourth leg, which is what I am trying very hard to avoid doing right now. Um, just about four minutes to the start of shot. So going back to Google Earth, I've got my LOPs. Uh, and now, let's see, I've got my LOP. Oh, thank goodness, we're finally leaving the cloudy area. This, this is where it gets really nice, hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed. The, the uh, cloud satellite view that I looked at before I left was uh, predicting this area to be virtually cloudless, and it looks like we're pretty close to being that. So I have those down and just double check that I have all the site information from the previous site and we're good. Clear star one, star two, and the site. We're set up now. Uh, and then I want to copy this information down to my celestial log here. Azimuth is uh, 109, and the altitude is going to be 44 degrees 20 minutes. Uh, actual time of the shot is supposed to be at 1539. Second star, I don't think I did, yeah, I didn't do the second star yet. That should be pretty quick, though, because I don't have to change the location. Alright, uh, Neoplasis, where are you? Okay, 19 degrees. Let's do azimuth first, keep things consistent. Azimuth is 200 degrees. Good, that's 90 degrees apart, so that Neoplasidus is a good start then. We've been pretty much always going southeast, and we'll continue to be going southeast. Except for the first leg, really. But we couldn't do celestial navigation there. 27 degrees. 35 minutes. Stuff into my log, the you know, Lassidus, 200 degrees, and altitude of 27 degrees, 35 minutes. Save, and I'm all set up. And not a second too soon, we got 40 minutes to the start of shot. seconds. Let's see what insulation looks like right now. The sun is, is still, it should still be full night. The sun is still 30 degrees below the horizon. Seven seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Starting speed shot. Hey, not bad. Got it. This is going to be about a 15 mile offset. Um, and I 
forgot to um, check my altitude. It looks like we finally settled at like 12.8, which frankly I'm good enough given given uh, how close we are here and how annoying it was to get through the winds. I'd rather not change wind levels if I can help it. Okay, so the distance offset was uh, 15 miles. Actual time of shot was uh, 39 as anticipated. So I think that means we're going fast. Bot star one. Yeah. Yeah, we're expecting to be... Oh, wait a minute, no. Let me think about this for a second. A negative offset means you're in the opposite direction. Yeah, we're slow. We're slow. Okay. Let's see. An off-the-hand calculation says that we're doing 239 ground speed. That's, that's really slow. All right, let's set up for Neoplacidus. 200 degrees. Twenty-seven degrees, thirty-five minutes. All right, clear and go. Actual shot time, I think, is going to be 1541. Minus 20, okay. Plot. All right, so we are slow, and we are north of course, which kind of surprises me given how many times we've been biased towards the, uh, towards being further south. What just happened with the sky? Ooh, you know what? Um, 4230. Minus 20. Get my offset written down. Okay. So 42 from 39. We've traveled three minutes, and in three minutes we would have traveled 12 miles. 12 miles would put us uh, not quite. I was thinking it might have something to do with crossing hemispheres. Um, that is expected to happen. Let's see, we're, we were 15 miles from it. Alright, we'll, we'll, we need to worry about this stuff later. I, it, Figuring out where I am is more important than figuring out when we're going to cross the anti-meridian into the Western Hemisphere. So, focusing on the task at hand here, um, negative 15 is going to put us, let's see, 15 nautical miles at um, 109 plus 180, so it's going to be 289 degrees out for 15 nautical miles. 
So we're going about... Um... Oh, I know. I can take our assumed position. We're going four miles a minute. Uh, we were 15 miles... Or was it 20? No, it's 15. 15 miles out. And then a further... Seven, so 20 miles to go. And that's going to happen in five minutes. 39 to 44. Guys, as I speak, we are crossing from the eastern hemisphere into the western hemisphere. Lati or, sorry, longitude is going from positive to negative. And that's a huge milestone for this trip. We are switching hemispheres. Not just because you know, of latitude and longitude suddenly shifting. It's also significant because it almost coincides with our entry under the Pacific plate, the tectonic plate, which happens as soon as we take off from Tonga. At that point, the islands will become very few and far in between. We've been lucky in having lots of islands around us. That will not be the case in, uh, after Tonga. Um, Niua uh, is alone by itself and it has one reef a hundred miles away. The reef does not break the surface of the ocean. So we really don't have anything else to go off with for, for the flight to Niua. And again, you know, almost every flight things will get more and more serious. Um, Almost the same thing happens when we go to Tahiti, except, oh wait, no, first is Rarotonga. The, the flight to Rarotonga, I'm pretty sure, is even more blue water, so, yeah, all right, enough distraction. I need to get these, these LOPs plugged in here. So it's going to be 199. Okay, save this line. This is going to be 30 minute fix speed LOP. Okay, and then from 1840. One seventy-five, fifty-five. I then have to plot out along. Let's see. This is going to be at two hundred degrees, uh, except the north. So it's going to be twenty degrees for twenty nautical miles. Add 90, so it's going to be 110. Why am I not getting? There we go. I didn't get the same shoes for some reason until I knew the crap. 30 minute fix horse LOP. Okay, save and drag that up, and I didn't make my speed fix line long enough to intersect, so now I have to go back into it and drag this thing out further so it intersects. And now we can get a speed calculation here. So in 29 minutes we travel... Let's see, 29 minutes, 122 miles. Two hundred fifty one miles per hour is what we're truing. Okay, 
or I should say that's what our ground speed is, because true air speed is going to be what it wants to be. Okay, now, um, we did that site at 39, and it's been 10 minutes, so we've gone, looking back at the E6B, we've gone 42 miles, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my correction now correction checklist. So I'm going to go down to, let's see, wind correction to parallel. Let's see, we were, if I extend the line we were on, I, said, I think I said we went 42 additional miles. So that's going to put us with um, 164 miles since talk. And now I can figure out what our offset is. We are now going to be about 30 miles off course. And we went 164 miles um, since last being on course. So, let's see, the distance off course is on the outer scale. The distance off course. So that's. Uh, 30 miles. I'm going to line that up with 162. And the rate says 11 degrees to parallel. That's weird. That's almost like that's almost like this is a, a heading indicator, not a compass. Because that doesn't make sense. 11 degrees is almost our magnetic offset. Okay, um, writing it down on the log. 15, 52, correction. 9 right to parallel. Let's see, consulting the nav log. We are supposed to be following 97 degrees. So if I add 9 to that, that brings us to 108. Probably, we're so smooth right now, I think I can just hit it with the uh, rudder for a little bit. I think I know why we're going slow. Forgot to put, forgot to tuck in everything else. That's what it is. I was going to say there's something, something fishy going on here. But we need, that's only to parallel, we need to get back on course now. So to do that, wind correction to destination on inner scale, set distance remaining in flight opposite off course and outer scale. So we're 30 miles off and we have 160 plus 30, so 190, let's call it 200 less flight distance. So about 400 miles. We're showing 4.5 degrees to intercepts. And that was done at 1554. Now we're 15 degrees above 97, so that's going to lead us to 112, which we're pretty much just about it now because I haven't really settled out, so I think we're pretty good on that.
All right, before I do anything else, let's let's see if we can find some stuff that's out that we can close up here. Ah, uh, yeah, the uh, inner coolers are out. They, I believe, are closed now. Bullet flaps are out. The uh, oil coolers are shut. So, let's see, these are... That's these guys. are closed now. So 1555. Um, let's say closed coolers. And I'll just know that that's all of them. All right, we're still drifting to the right, so we don't want to overcorrect here. This is, this is the stuff I was expecting to see. It's freakishly calm out in the, in the Pacific. I'm, I'm really feeling it now. I'm really feeling the, the loneliness of the ocean. I don't know what it was, but something about crossing into the Western Hemisphere gave me a little bit of a, ooh, we're really out there feeling. Um, okay. Back to the normal checklist. Let's see, we, we went through the no at any point during the flight. I'm not too concerned. I'm not too concerned about it right now. We already mentioned the distance flown and distance remaining. Our interpolated position, we can do that. So we're traveling 251 is what I'm using right now, miles per hour. And it's been about 20 minutes really since our last check so we've flown about 84 miles now So right now I believe we're at 18 degrees 46 minutes south and 179 degrees 9 minutes west. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I need to gather here. Distance remaining, interpolated position, if it's possible to return to base, yes. Okay, so we're, we're going to be coming up to talk one pretty soon. This is a actual checkpoint, so I'm going to update um, update the field chart here. And we'll 
take a look at the LOP intercept chart just to see is it is it worth going on to right now. Um, our next shot is scheduled for 1609. So the top one shot. Um, I think we should just keep using Antares. It's our LOP star, so the more information we collect about it, the less chances there are of us doing something really stupid like last time. get concerned when, when a weather update comes because it can either mess things up or make them better. Alright, and Tare's, well, shoot, first I need to update my position. Where the heck is Todd 1? Talk 1 is at 19, 19 south, 19 degrees, 25 minutes south. 1925 south and one seventy eight degrees five minutes. West. Okay. All right. So that puts um, azimuth at 109 degrees and altitude 53 degrees 10 minutes. And we'll take a look at Neoplasidus. That is going to be at 201 degrees. Twenty-five degrees ten minutes. And we copy the latitude and longitude on here for easy transfer. much time. Uh, confirm that we have our 30 minute fix plotted. Yes. Alright, clear star 1, star 2, and the site. We're at 19 south, 25 minutes, 1 78 degrees west. Here we go, guys. Mouse wheeling. Well, actually, can we roll over? Ugh. I, I don't like that. We can, we can go larger than 180 degrees, apparently. Uh, yeah, let's not do that. That's against convention. Mouse wheeling all the way back. Okay, now we're somewhere in the Atlantic. Okay, now we're Massachusetts, Midwest. Okay. Uh, Montana, California, all right, we're off the west coast. All right, now we're at Hawaii, uh, almost, and that's us. Okay. Well, that was fun. I had way, way more fun narrating that than I probably should have. 178 and 5. 1925. Azimuth is 109 degrees. Fifty three degrees ten minutes. All right. 
right. Man, I, I need to feel like I need a breath of fresh air. I've been super, 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 super busy with getting stuff set up. I get just under four minutes of rest here. There should be a couple of um, really small islands down there where if we can see good enough. That's the one benefit of not having too many clouds is uh, you can see what's down there. But if I learned anything about my last moonless journey, uh, it's that you're not going to really see stuff down there. I can't see it. Uh, in the words of a Bond girl, I cannot see. That quote is from Live and Let Die. Super lonely. You know what? I'm expecting the talk one point at 1610. Um, it's only one minute. I, I don't think it matters. We took the first shot at 1510 anyway, so that puts it an hour off. Okay, I'm, I'm cool with that. Oh yeah, and I should check the landfall chart here. Um, first landfall observation starts at 1559. Oh my gosh, we're already on it. Um, okay, well, I can't do it again until I, until I get another shot. Let's see, base is going to be expecting at about 54 degrees, and we're at 53 degrees. Ah, oh, man. Man, oh, man. Ah, I don't like this. Oh, wait a minute. It's only, yeah, of course it's only a degrees difference. It's, be, it's because of the, it's because of yeah, okay. Yeah, it's because of our offset only, not the sun moving. It scared me for a second. Ah, we're climbing again. I'm going to trim down. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll let it go one more minute just so that I can get a full speed read out here. I'll take a 30-minute uh, speed and I'll take an hour speed and we'll compare the two and see if there was any difference between um, closing the shutters. Although it, that could have been caused by the wind, which looks like it may have at least reduced or quit. Okay, 30 seconds from shot time. Antares is going to be somewhere up there. Okay, 
five, four, three, two, one, starting the shot. Not bad. Right there. Oh man, let me get the stuff in the chart. That's a quick copy, 109. Um, and 53 degrees, 10 minutes. Actual time of the shot, 1610. Then Mia Placidus, 201 degrees. 25 degrees, 10 minutes, got it, and just in time, the shot just completed. Negative 15 offset again. Yeah, we're maintaining the speed, there's basically no difference here. Okay. Alright, let me get that plotted real quick, so let's see... Um, we're 15 nautical miles in the behind direction, which is going to be 289. 15 miles at 289. Now I can swing this out. To 199. Save one hour fix speed LOP. Okay, mark star one. Yeah, now that's going to be a little bit off course now because these stars aren't perfectly perpendicular. Alright, now I'm going to plug in the Placidus. Go back to the chart. 201. Twenty-five ten. Okay, clear and shoot. I think that's it right about there. All right, this one is going to be at sixteen thirteen. Direction is two o one. Uh, negative ten, so one. No, no, twenty one. Okay, and then. So that's one twelve. One wait, no no, not one hour fix. These are these are talk officials, talk one course L O P. And fix the other one. This ain't the one hour fix, this is an official checkpoint. Talk one speed LOP. Okay, well, um, 
the good news regarding course, guys, is that we are actually getting closer to being on course. You see how that's smaller than it was last time? Um, as long as I just keep an eye and make sure that I'm actually on the correct heading. Um, if I connect the two and extrapolate all the way, I'm going to hit my LOP intercept bang on. So the correction that I did seems to have done the trick exactly as it should have. Um, but now we face the fact that we're now in a different section of the nav log. So we're now on to... Um, Ninety-six. It's just one degree, so I'm just gonna nick. That's it. Okay. Now I can find. Let's see. Our thirty-minute speed, which is really gonna be. Thirty one minutes. So in thirty one minutes we went a hundred and forty six miles. That's a lot faster. Two hundred eighty eight miles per hour. Maybe closing it did did work. If I drag it out and call it an hour, we went 200. Oh, I don't even need the E6B for this because it has been exactly one hour. The one hour speed, 266 miles per hour. And the first one was at 251. Okay. So we're going faster now, 286, at 286 miles per hour. That is actually faster than I'm anticipating. Um, that's actually four faster than our true airspeed, which means we might have a tailwind right now. I'm expecting in this leg to be going at 272. But hey, I'll take it, you know, that's less, that's less fuel. All right, now going back to the landfall chart, we got to figure out what our what our situation was. So we took an observation of Antares last time, and it was at. So let me write these things down. At 1539. And then 1610. 1539, Antares was at 44 degrees 5 minutes. And then, uh, wait a minute, 1659. Scared myself for a second. Um, I was thinking I was a lot closer to the LFB or something than I am. And then at, at 16, 10, whoops, I didn't get the uh, Mia Placidus offset, negative 10. There we go. So we went from 25% missed to 12.5% missed. So at 1610, Antares was at 52 degrees 55 minutes. 
So now here's where I need to do my interpolation. I'm going to go back to the landfall chart, and we've got a slot for 1559 and 1619. So that's two-thirds of the way between 44.5 and 52.55. So that's going to be... Uh, Is that a song in the year 5255? Or was it 5555? Or was it 3555? I, I, I don't know. I just know that's a really good song, whatever it is. Um, okay. So we. So there was a difference of 8 degrees. 50 minutes. So if I divide that by 2, that's 4 degrees 25 minutes. And now to add it to what I observed, which is 44 degrees 5 minutes, which means we're going to end up with 48 degrees 30 minutes. So I can now write this into my observed category for the LOP intercept. And I find that we're pretty far off on um, so. I'm not too concerned with, uh, I'm not too concerned that we're, that we've had our LOP intercept. Um, although one thing I can do is now that I have a speed, um, of 286 miles per hour, I can figure out exactly how, how far out we are from, uh, LOP intercepts. That's going to be at 239 miles, and we're traveling 266 miles an hour. So basically 54 minutes. We, we can definitely take one more shot. So we'll plan for the 1 hour 30 minute fix, and then that's it. So I'll plan the one hour, 30 minute fix um, around, let's see, 1639. So let's update the time here to 1639. And oh, the sky is brightening here. Uh, at that next one, we'll be halfway between astronomical dawn and nautical dawn. So we'll, we'll be dead in the center of astronomical twilight when we take our next sight. Wait a minute did not update my position. Uh, okay, so how far am I going to travel in? To, no, hang on. 1610 to 59, so it's 29. 29 minutes. Twenty-nine minutes will take us a hundred and 38 miles. Okay, so at 16.39, um, the one hour, 30 minute fix, we're assuming, oh, that's nice. South 20 degrees zero minutes and uh, west 176 degrees 20 minutes. Okay, now I update. So we're at 20 south. Now if I look at the insulation chart, we are very close, we're anticipating to be very close to nautical, um, nautical dawn and the start of nautical twilight. Whereas uh, Skyview Cafe puts it, um, begin nautical twilight. Estimated to be at 109 degrees for 
azimuth, and the altitude is going to be 61 degrees 35 minutes. And then we need Neoplasimus. Neoplasidus is going to be at um, 22 degrees 30 minutes elevation and 202 degrees for azimuth. All right, not to plug in all that information. Tari is 109, 61 degrees 35 minutes. Neoplacidus, 202 degrees azimuth and 22 degrees 30 minutes. Okay, and lastly, updated here so I can verify that I have this information. We had an offset of negative 10, good. And I have the position kept. So star one, star two, clear sight. 20 degrees south on the nose. I'll have to look it up. This might be the furthest south we've been so far. We went due north from Australia and we've been slowly burning that off ever since. One seventy six twenty. Okay, and it's 26, shot scheduled for 39, so I get a little bit of a rest finally. Um, no, 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 it's in the azimuth. 109 degrees? And then, uh, 61.35. Now we're good. And we're getting more clouds. So we're getting a little bit closer to Tonga too. Tonga Tapu too. <laughs> Yeah, I really wish those, those clouds would clear up because it allowed me to sight Tonga Tapu earlier. We might be able to sight Tonga Tapu at um, the 30 minute fix, or the one hour 30 minute fix if it's clear enough. I think we're done with the attitude indicator, so I'm going to reset the view here. Oh yeah, and I, I finally have time to talk about this. So I wasn't doing it before because the longitude was counting up and that's kind of confusing when you're counting down. So here's the deal. We're crossing the Pacific Ocean west to east, eastbound. So if we go eastbound, longitude will go down. So now we've crossed the international date line, which means it's not going to go up again. So the lower the longitude gets, the closer we get to our destination. And our ultimate destination in Concepcion is at 73 degrees west. So when that longitude reaches down to minus 73, our journey's over. So that gives you an idea. We have 103 degrees of longitude to cover. And we are darn close to the equator, so that means we have just about the entire Earth's circumference worth of that. So that's going to be 
you know, one three point six of the entire distance around the Earth, which is something like twenty four thousand nine hundred miles. And I finally looked up how to use the slide rule again. So if I go out to um, let's see what what math are we talking about? Three point six twenty four thousand. Uh, 900. Now I want to line that up with uh, 3.6, right? thousand fifty miles and that sounds about right because the journey was about ten ten five cool so that worked I uh, successfully divided using the slide rule and I know how to use it again not sure why I forgot last leg but it's working now I love being able to use slide rules and e6b's it's maximum independence and uh, you're not reliant on any uh, any software or technology that can break. You're not relate. You're not um, worried about any startups that can brick your um, your reference units. You know, um, it's it's very crude, but it does the job, and it, it it's guaranteed to work as long as you got the paper um, or plastic in this case. Uh, yeah, Townsville was at 1918 South, so yes, we are yes, we are officially further south than we've ever been on this journey. Even further south than Queensland, Australia. Just about seven and a half minutes to go until the next site. So that means we should be getting dawn. Um, yeah, that's kind of interesting. So that weird blue glow that was on the horizon the whole time seems to have either disappeared or it's been overtaken, and that's why this is comparatively looking black. Been overtaken with this bluish area. And this bluish area, I believe, represents the coming dawn. This is astronomical twilight, uh, if I am not mistaken. And uh, after this LOP intercept, it's definitely, or sorry, after this 30 minute site, it's definitely time to configure for LOP intercept.
haven't been writing down my indicated airspeed, but I probably should because um, the, the true airspeed is a function of your altitude and your indicated airspeed. So I know what my altitude is. Um, did we drop down to 10,000? It kind of looks like that. I thought I trimmed. That's right, I trimmed down. I must have trimmed down too far. Well, I'm trimming up now. Um, so 240 knots indicated. I can use the E6B to convert that to true. And to be honest, I should have done that. So 200 and, actually wait, uh, we want 10,000 feet. The temperature going back to the flight plan is going to be about, um, I think it's around 8 or 9 Celsius. So now if I look on the inside, uh, which is our indicated, 240, the outside is going to be 285. So 285 is miles per hour is what we're getting, and I got a speed of 286. So there you go. It sounds like there's, or it seems like there's basically zero wind out here right now. Okay, getting pretty close to uh, Next, the next checkpoint here. Just under one minute to shot time. Thirty seconds. Actual time of shot, So how, how much into this am I on a uh, personal level? Well, I had a dream about my flights uh, across, uh, across the ocean, so 
I, I think that pretty much convinces my my inner brain that that I uh, seriously believe I'm doing it. Okay, minus ten for the offset. Uh, and I have been wasting time. I shouldn't have done that. Um, okay, minus ten. So not one oh nine. Two eight nine. Slow again. Two eight nine, and we're back. Only ten this time, though, which is a little bit better. That that's the speed improvement. This is a celestial only point, so that's the one hour, 30 minute fix speed LOP. Okay, now I can get set up for um, the other shot, um, the course shot. Neoplacidus, which is going to be at 202 degrees. Two two, and the altitude is going to be 2230. Okay, I can confirm that I have, oh, Mark Star 1. Ah, shoot, messed it up. I need to go back to, uh, the azimuth, which is at 109, to get this to work. This is this is very similar to that mistake I made last time. There we go. We're okay there. So now we're going to go to 202 and 2230. Um, have the offset and the star is in. Starting the shot. All right. That's what I like to see. So the shot is probably going to complete close to 43, so we'll call it 1643. I think we got it. Just a tick. Okay. Positive five. So this, what this tells me is that we've come back on course now. So we're gonna mark star two. So now we're slightly south of course. Um, so remember we put that correction in. Well, we're back on course now, so we take it out now. So I'm gonna mark down 1643. Resume course. So, consulting my flight plan, um, our course should be, without correction, 96 degrees, which the airplane is pretty much done on its own. Eh, not quite. Pretty close, though. So we did actually drift just a bit south. That's okay. Um, so I need to get this stuff plugged in. 
Actually, it's with this plug in. All I gotta do now is just get the, uh... Let's see, 176.20. This time it's positive five, so in the direction of two zero two. Two zero two for five nautical miles. So two nine or two. If I turn it on on the side. Save one hour, 30 minute fix course LOP. Perfect, fix that. So now, um, if I draw out our speed again, See how many minutes went by. 16, 10, 39. So in 29 minutes, we went 128 miles. slow down again. Now we're doing 200 and 264 true. Just make sure that that's correct. The actual time of the shot was 29 minutes apart. So 29 lines up with 128. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going really slow for some reason now. So, estimated time to LOP intercept. It's 114 miles. Exactly 26 minutes. Estimating... LOP intercept around. It's going to be 26 minutes beyond the time of the shot. Seventeen oh five. So we're going to be about six minutes late. should be coming on pretty soon. And if it were clear and we could see, we should be able to see Tonga Tapu now. All right, now very carefully, I'm going to set up for my land. So I have these guys, right? Yes, I do, because once I clear them, there's no going back. Let's see, offset, positive, five, yes, okay. Clear star one, star two, and sight. Set the assumed position to the destination. That is 21 south. 14 minutes. One seventy-five west. Ten minutes. 21 south, 15 minutes, 
175 west, 10 minutes. Okay. Azimuth. What time is it? It's 16.49. The latest landfall chart has 16.39. So it's a split. We'll say 108. 108. And this is not where it matters quite as much. But here's where it does, elevation. I have to take the average of 39 to 50 and be quick because that's going around. 63.30 is what the base is expecting right now. Okay, that represents where Antares should be. We should be all set up now. We can go ahead and shoot the LOP intercept, and good. That tells me that we're, so far, not going to have a panic attack because it happens to be where I'm expecting. I'm going to write this down. So this shot was just about averaging 1651. So roughly 1651 minus 45. Okay, plot star one. So we're approximately 45 miles from LOP intercepts. And we took the shot roughly 11 to 12 minutes after our last sight. So 11 to 12 minutes would make us travel about 50 miles from our uh, sighted position. So 50 miles from the position. Now if I take the remainder, so, so now if I draw a line out in the direction of our course from our last intercept, the one hour 30 minute fix, towards the LOP intercept, and then now drag the tail end of that on to see how much extra distance we have. I'm anticipating 63 miles, and if I, that's statue miles, if I convert to nautical miles, that's speed estimate says we should, we should be 55 miles from it. Now, we did go a few extra minutes, maybe two minutes, since I actually plugged that site in. It's all within the margin of error. So we would have traveled up to nine miles. So I think that means that we're okay. So let's let's do it when we're halfway from where we expect to be. So we said 45 miles and 45 nautical miles is gonna be about 50 statue miles. Um, so 50 statue miles will take us about 11, 11 minutes. So maybe do it again at 1659. Yeah, we'll do it again at 1659 because that's the next. Um, yeah, that's the next definitive time that I've solved for. Oh my gosh, the sky looks like a painting right now. That looks like a coming front sky. Uh, yeah, this must be uh, not quite nautical dawn. We're t we're close enough to the. Um, ooh, we're gonna lose the stars early today because we're so low. We're gonna lose the um, or, or the uh, nautical dawn will happen almost at the same time as it will on the ground because we're only at twelve thousand. Right now, the horizon wraps about halfway around the sky, so. This is pretty much where we enter Nautical Dawn.
just as spoken, this is it. Okay, so 1659. Oh, we gotta get this stuff entered. I can't just sit, sit and do nothing. 108. This never changes because we're assuming the base at this point. 108 and 65.7, which it corresponds to 42. So we'll say 65, 40, 45 nautical miles. And I have the time down so we can clear the shot. And I'm going to see if we can use this as star 2 to mark our progression to the LOP intercept. So if I can draw star 2 off of star 1, then we can begin to see the progression. All right, I think it's bright enough now. We should be able to look for Tonga Tap. I'm just getting that sinking feeling in my stomach right now because I can't see it. Um, there might be something... That... I can't tell. There is... That's either a very low-hanging star... That looks too low to be a star. That might be an airport. Ninety minutes to the next shot. One minute to the shot. Fifteen seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Starting the shot. Okay. don't think we're quite there yet. 15, maybe 15 miles from. So we're reading about 65.4. Okay, my graph says that we are just about, just about hitting it. Okay, so 15 miles. Ooh, ooh, yes. Yes, this is a good opportunity to, to look for land. Oh, I don't like what I see. Well, guys, the sky is 100% clear. Is that an island? It looks like an island. Um, there are islands supposed to be in the LOP intercept. Okay, 
Okay, I'm going to write that down. 1700 Island. Okay, so we were, what, 15 miles from, uh... Fifteen miles from LOP intercept. Fifteen nautical miles, which is going to be about sixteen statue miles. So that's three three point five minutes. Seventeen o two, really. So I can update this one more time for the base. So now we're going to say it's seventeen o two. But now I got to plug in the base. So real quick, twenty one. One fifteen, one seventy five, ten, and seventeen oh two, and I'm looking for Antares sixty eight ten. Start two. Yeah, it's working. Nice. Um sixty eight ten and sixty eight ten. Hurry, or this information will expire. Oh, well, it thinks the sun is up for some reason. It's not. Um, now, one of my actions was I have to let the shot complete. I, yeah, this is it. Alright, turn on LOPI, LOP of the intercept at 1702. And now we're going to turn to the azimuth, which is 108 degrees. Plus 90, so that's 198 degrees. But I have to subtract east, so it's not 198, it's going to be 186. It's really hard to tell, but I think I might see Tonga Tapu. It, it's either fog or, or Tonga Tapu. Okay, uh, now from the LOP intercept, it is, uh, it's actually further than I thought, 52 statue miles, and at our current rate, that's going to take about 11 minutes to reach. That's it, yes! Okay, I feel so much better now. I've, I've proven myself again I can do it. This is just like the third leg. Turn and there's the island. Success. So we're predicting 
Tonga landfall at 17. Wait a minute. 1710 is what the, what the um, navlog said, but for us, we turned at 1702. So. Estimating Tonga at 17.13. And we have a beginning of descent that per the flight plan is only three minutes, so it's 17.05. It's 17.05. This is it. Um, begin descent checklist. Throttles. We're probably. It seems like the the numbers that I have undershoot at, uh, or they overshoot at low altitudes and undershoot at high altitudes. We'll bring it back to 20 inches. Seventeen oh five. Start descent. Props back to 1600 RPM. Fuel boost pumps off below 12,000 feet. Well, we've been going up and down. Oh, nice. You can see in the cockpit now. So turning those guys off, we're staying below 12,000. Wow, it is clear, super clear. And this is what we would expect getting closer to the um, to the Eastern Pacific. Um, the Pacific starts, the South Pacific starts dry because you have a cold current coming up from Antarctica and that doesn't fuel, um, that doesn't fuel any thunderstorms. So when you have cold water, the, uh, the air never gets warm enough to, to start thunderstorms. So the humidity of the air stays dry. But as the sun warms and it's been in the tropics for days and days, and now you're starting to get closer to the west, it picks up moisture and becomes more and more and more capable of forming thunderstorms and cyclones. There actually comes a point where they declare that there's no cyclones because it's too cold. Like, if I, if I look up the storm naming zones map that I have here, we're in zone 7, which is the RAV Tropical Cyclone Committee. When we cross through, right now we're at like 176 degrees, um, 175 degrees west. When we get to 120 degrees west, the caption is, it's too cold here to form tropical storms. So apparently, it's guaranteed to be cyclone free once we cross below 120 west. Okay, the last item on my descent checklist was O2 flow off below 12,000 feet. We never turned it on, we never got high enough. I love this. The, the, I'm not going to say it because as soon as I do, it's going to mess up, but I, we pretty much nailed the LOP, so, and the way I know is because we're going right down the magnetic line, and we're pointing at the airport. That's how I know that um, the LOP intercept has, has done well. Position update, we have anticipated about four minutes to go. We're at 8,000 feet. The island coming up on the right, oh, that is nothing what it looks like in real life. There should be a whole reef down there. This is the kind of stuff that I that I hate about uh, Prepper 3D and FSX is it just doesn't pull realistically enough information.
All right, let's see. The, the runway that we wanted to use for light plan is 11. So that means I want to come to the west side of the airport. Let's see, we are landing at NFTM. And there's only, there's only two runways on a single strip with ditches on either side, so I better not pull another one of those lazy landings. The cool thing about the, the uh, Tonga Tupa Airport, which is apparently uh, It's either Nuku or, or Nuka Alofa, the, the uh, airport that we're flying into. It's really cool because at the other end of 11, of runway 11, that's where all the airport infrastructure is. So it's like all the, infra all the airport infrastructure is clustered in one area at the tip of runway um, 29er. And then there's just the big long runway that goes out. And you can kind of see it right now. The, the nose is just about pointing. Um, let's just turn the gun sight off for, for, or on for a second. Are you kidding me? Okay, it's just my positioning in the cockpit. Uh, well, that doesn't work. All right. Well, forget that turn that back off. Um, you can kind of see right in front of the nose, there's like a long strip. And then on the uh, on the left side, there's like a, a, you know, a big boxy area. That's the, um, that's the airport infrastructure. All right, I think we just about nailed landfall. We're probably only about one minute out. And you guys can see why, why I was so concerned about this island is its size. I mean, look at how big the runway is compared to the entire island. There, there's no question about where it is. When I was getting close to V2 Levu, I had to um, think about what part of the island I was going to go to. Oh, that is cool. Tonga has an island within an island. That's really cool. Okay, we're getting really close now. So, landing checklists. Um, fuel selectors to fullest tanks. It's been no more than two hours. So, one, two at 67 gallons an hour, down 130, which means there is um, per, per tank, it's 65, so 100 gallons in either tank. Drop tanks are the fullest tanks. We're on the fullest tanks. Okay. Boost pumps, one, two, on. Propeller governors, 2,600 RPM. Mixture control auto rich. Um, open up all the shutters. Everything is up. Speed established 175 miles per hour. Wow, so 20 is apparently too high. So the magic area is somewhere between 15 and 20. Okay, it's still early enough in the day, so I will switch the landing lights back on again. Okay, 
and we have 175 miles per hour. Landing gear is going down. Speed established 150. This is gorgeous. Tonga is living up to its expectations that I have. This is probably one of the... I want to visit all the islands at some point in my life, but Tonga is probably number one on my list. You know, there, there's so many good things about it that I like. And this has definitely been my most enjoyable entry so far. Gorgeous. Oh, nice. Pretty much coming right down the center line, too. All right, well, at this point, we're high. Landing's assured. Flaps down. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, let's reset the um, reset the view here. One, two, three, four, five, six. How long is this runway again? That's 8,800 feet. I think we should be able to do it. We're coming in a little bit high, um, but we are down to about 110 miles an hour, so we should be good. Okay, hitting the planetary boundary layer here. in the ditch. Come on now. Nice and controlled. Like it. A little bit late, but other than that, not too bad. I think I see the pump. It's at the far end with all the infrastructure. Nice. We, we had that easily. I didn't use any braking there. Let's go ahead and do our after landing checklist now. I think I forgot to do that on one of the, the landings too, which is stupid as all heck. Okay, after landing flaps up. Feel 
boost pumps off. One, two. Prop governors full forward. And we'll bring the flaps back to closed. The flaps actually significantly slow this airplane down. That's why we rarely have to use the brakes. And if we have to, we can land on runways almost as short as they get. Um, coolant shutters full open. I think we took care of that. Yeah, th these guys are open. They're open a lot more than I saw earlier. Maybe automatic really does work. Um, shutters in the back are open, and the intercoolers do what they're supposed to, so those are open too, so we're good. Uh, landing lights, yeah, we can we can turn those off, but only once we get off the runway. I want to maintain visibility until we get off. Oh, and I should get our landing time, too. Probably about 1722-ish. Wow, are we really that far out? Wow. We're bringing new meaning to field. Well, this is going to be hard to taxi at night. The good news is the P-38 is actually quite well equipped to operate on the grass. In fact, it can take off from the grass if it has to. That's why, you know, they have, they have a muddy field checklist. And what you're supposed to do in a muddy field is you tap the brakes. Ah, yeah, that's the that's the fuel. Yeah, the the airport is not well seen uh, in flight simulator, you know, because there's just one big hangar where where all that other stuff is there. You know, in this area, there's you know there's an entire village here basically, and um, a number of hangars like. At least four hangars. Maybe the ter yeah, I guess that's what it is. The actual terminal is over there, but everything else is here. The windsock is way out there. That's not helpful. Oh, oh shoot! Um, before I approach this, we wanted to climb out on the wing and, and do our check as we normally do. So let's open the window here, and we don't need to set the parking brakes because we're on the grass. We'll go ahead and check the uh, fuel levels here with the fuel straw. And for the tanks, we have the uh, left reserve reading about 54. Um, the left main is full. Um, the right reserve is reading 54. Uh, right main is full. And the external tanks are just about half full at around 84 and a half gallons. We'll call it, um, yeah, 84.5. So that's 169 plus 108, so that's 278 plus 180, so 458, 463, something's wrong with the math. Let's see, 169, 108, and then... Uh, 93 each, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, I carried one. I should have carried it too. 463. We're good. Okay. Well, I'm glad. That means that the math in my head was was the same as my math on paper. So, from a, from a mental math note, I'm good. From a from a real practical math standpoint, uh, yeah, that needs work. Hmm, <laughs> jungles, jungle, jungle. Nice. Oh yeah, landing lights off. Uh, recognition lights, one, two, off. Oh my gosh, these fuel pumps, they keep getting smaller and smaller. Uh, that's how you know that you're uh, really starting to um, get out into the ocean. Oh my gosh. They, I think they get one step smaller than this. Uh, yeah. Well, no, they get two steps smaller. Uh, one step is a red can. Two steps smaller is it don't exist. And wouldn't that be interesting if we land and find that we can't get a hundred low lead? Okay. Enough of that stopping engines checklist. So we're going to go ahead and set the parking brake here. And make sure that it's not the other one that doesn't, that reloads the simulation. Um, oh yeah, and I should get the block in time right here. Uh, 1725. Okay, throttles to 1600. Let's see, in the meantime, there's probably a couple switches here that I want to turn off. Yeah, like last time, we didn't get the wing lights or the tail lights turned off. Um, let's see, everything else is off here. Turn these guys off. Bomb selector off. I think that's just about everything. Okay. We're good. Um, it's like, as soon as it hits 1500, it just wants to take off. Throttles back to 1200. And mixture control, I don't cut off. Throttles open when firing stops, when propellers stop rotating, magnetos off. Cockpit heat is off. I'm going to close all of our shutters here. Oh, one click to close, interesting. Okay, everything is closed up. Avionics light is off. We're going to turn off the AC generator. And generator... One is off. Generator two is off. Panel light is off. Battery... Off. And then fuel selectors are both in drop tank or off. I forgot we opened this already. Hop on out.
and put the chocks in. Okay, guys, uh, we did it. Um, business as usual. This is exactly what I was hoping for on this flight. Um, I'm feel I'm feeling confident again. Um, as long as I just don't make the same stupid mistakes that that I did last time, of which most of them were intentional. Um, there were a couple that were unintentional. Um, we should be good. So let's see. Oh yeah, we should we should get our um our final time here. Um, let's see. Flight plan effectively closed at seventeen twenty nine. Seventeen twenty nine. So that makes our flight just about counting the uh, stuff at the end. Um, two and a half hours for two hours, 20 minutes, and we were expecting a two hour and 13 minute flight. So not bad. Um, that was only seven minutes off time wise. So I think we're good. Um, so that was leg five. Now leg six is going to take us over the 32,000 foot Tonga Trench. And that's the that is the depth of the water that I'm expecting to see under the plane. The deepest the Tonga Trench reaches, it's the second deepest trench on the Earth. 35,000 feet. But we're not going to be going over that part. We're going to be going over some 32,000 something feet. We'll be crossing from the um, Australia plate to the Pacific plate. Uh, and if you look at, at this on Google Earth, it, it, it looks starkly different. Deep blue water, a lot deeper than before in the high teens and 20s. Um, isolated islands like uh, Niua, our next destination, there's 106 miles to the nearest uh, reef, the Antelope Reef, and it doesn't really even break the surface. Uh, only yet I guess low tide. Do you do you see the the exposed ground here? So yeah, um, we I think we've got everything back in order just in time before things get really crazy. Um, and when I say crazy, I mean really difficult. This is where the demanded skill level increases significantly. I will see you guys next time for leg six. Uh, things are things are getting real. We're in the Western Hemisphere now. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.